Namaste. Now, I must say, we have probably all heard the cliché about onomatopoeia, that it makes music to my ears. As with other clichés, such as free with purchase, people simply ignore this concept when expressed, or such as with when a tree falls in the woods and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Another common conundrum. Too often the preferably ignorant come to a false conclusion prematurely and accept their own personal philosophy as being universally true. So the question, what if there is no such thing as bad music, only different genres of music appealing to different tastes among a variety of different types of audience members, is not widely considered now. If there is no bad music, then there is no good music either, and each note of every song becomes relative to the sum total of all music as to what it reflects quantitatively. But there can be no hope for a both honest and accurate assessment of any music's real quality from our ultimately infinitely unique and collectively subjective points of view. So what is music to our ears, if not merely what we find most aesthetically pleasing to listen to, and that which we would prefer were audible to us most? And if music theory is based on purely personally unique aesthetic tastes, then we must level our search for its meaning down to the scale of pattern recognition, a skill most human beings learn in early infancy. In short, when we see a shape that fits, it causes us to feel pleasure. Likewise, with how our ears have been tuned to the tones of modern scales of music, expressed mathematically as a needlessly complex series of integer ratios of sound wave pitch. One of the sound shapes our minds are most frequently attuned to is that of the nautilus shell, expressed as the Pythagorean phi or Fibonacci spiral. So what is it that attracts the mind to the shape of the Pythagorean or Phi spiral? Here we see a left-handed Phi spiral that revolves around a central origin point in an expanding counterclockwise direction or a clockwise contracting rotation. The chambers of this nautilus shell mimicking geometric design are each one a Pythagorean theorem triangle with one right or 90 degree angle. The original triangle at the core is a Pythagorean triangle formed of the abstract numbers 1, 1, and the square root of 2. A very particular Pythagorean triangle over which there has been much historical contention among the cult of Pythagoreans. The Pythagorean triangle is usually rendered with sides of 3, 4, and 5. However, because the same theorem used to de derive these measures the Pythagorean theorem itself may be applied to solve for the lengths of any triangle with one of its three interior angles being a right or 90 degree corner. The triangle formed by bisecting a unit square diagonally may also be solved in this manner and thus 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the square root of 2 squared, or, more simply, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Because the square root of 2 squared equals 2, 
then 1 plus 1 equals 2 fulfills the Pythagorean theorem in an exceptional way by cheating. The result of its doing so forms the pattern depicted here when applied across the board to all similar triangles with leg lengths measured only by one and by a square root of each next sum in numerical order. Reproducing this exceptional quality of the Pythagorean triangle of 1, 1, and the square root of 2 in this manner likewise generates a phi spiral. Inverting this image results in the right-handed phi spiral we see here which expands clockwise and contracts counterclockwise. The method of inversion, or mere reflection symmetry, is only one of many methods to alter and approximate a perfect golden or phi spiral. The geometric method of constructing such a similar design to the natural nautilus shell shown here is actually a less common, and thus less exact, means of approximating the proper and actual phi spiral shape itself. The more common, and thus that seen as more exact, method of depicting the phi spiral as being like that of the nautilus shell is the Fibonacci spiral, or as a series of rectangles and arcs, each arranged at a ratio to the next, along the spiraling pattern of these arcs, into a singularity, origin, and zero point, at 90 degree angles to one another, and at the certain specific ratio of one to two-thirds, defining the roughest approximation for phi as the ratio for the area of each iteration to the next adjacent to it on either side. Here we see in red outlines the exact Fibonacci spiral overlapping the similar naturally occurring pattern of growth of a nautilus shell. But, again, what is it about this golden mean, this Fibonacci spiral, this phi transcendental sum, and even the Pythagorean triangle at its core, that inspires the human brain in such a way as to catch our attention? And how does such a pattern recognition object as the golden spiral relate to what strikes us, moreover, as music to our ears. What is it about our own species form of brains that results in our taste in different kinds of music? Is there a format for music we would actually all find equally appealing to each of our differing ideals? The relationship between the cartilage of the exterior spiraling pina and the interior smaller and oppositely positioned relative to clockwise and counterclockwise directions oracle is based on an identical pattern to the rate of development from one inner organelle to the next of the various parts of the modern human brain. In other words, the shape we use to process sound waves is itself a template for how our brains evolve from one kingdom, family, genus, etc. to the next over the millions of years, and how each individual's brain develops in the fetal stages of their embryonic development in utero. 
Due to evolution over the millennia, it should come as no surprise. The key that unlocks the brain would be the same basic shape as a ventricle cross-section between its twin hemispheres. What we will be discussing in this next lecture is how and why the brain, the ear, and the nautilus shell have all evolved to mimic the pattern of the Fibonacci or phi spiral. The goal of studying this is to determine how and why this pattern constitutes a common average behind all our likes and dislikes of different tuning scales in music. First, we will study how the Pythagorean spiral template overlaps with the shape of the human brain. And then we will study how and why the phi spiral, like that formed of Pythagorean theorem triangles, relates to these different tuning scales in music. There is more to say, but for now, I must stay my tongue. Namaste.